What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, what we're going to be going through is how to write affiliate content. So this could be for many different things, depending on if you're doing it for SEO or you could be running paid advertising. No matter what it is, there's a few steps that you can follow to increase your conversions and really make sure that you're writing persuasively. All right, so when we get into this video, what's the first thing that you need to be aware of when you're actually writing for affiliate content and you're trying to essentially sell a product? Well, you need to learn copywriting and what copy Copywriting is, is the art of writing persuasively in order to get a reader to take a particular action. All right, so essentially this could be for them to sign up to an email list or for them to make a purchase, whatever it may be, you're trying to walk them through that process in order for them to take the action that you eventually set as a kind of stage throughout the article. So what we're gonna do is hop onto the computer. I'm gonna show you all of the information in a complete tutorial that's gonna break down everything you need to know. And I'm gonna walk you through that process so you understand how to research for a piece of content like this, how to write it, how to go into your introductions, the body of the content, how to use headlines. And I'm gonna explain all of the differences in the 80-20 to everything that you should be doing so you know where to focus your efforts and get the most returns. The first thing that I need you to do before we get into the video is to hit that like button and make sure that the YouTube algorithm gets a good indication that this is definitely gonna be a great video. All right, let's get into it. This is gonna be the research phase because what you need to do is before you write a product review on a particular affiliate product, it's going to be something that you're potentially going to be testing for quite a period of time and constantly improving. You want to get a few foundations in place right off the bat. Now, one of the most important things you can do is go out and research, you know, so go and see what's working in the industry, go and see what others have to say about it. So we've got, how would you describe the product? Okay. So how would you describe this product in your own words? Like what kind of product is it? What does it do? What type of customer would be the perfect buyer for the customer? for the product. So for example, what age would they be? What marital status would they have? What location are they in? What kind of language do they speak, you know, in regards to the niche and the industry? What's unique or special about this product? Like what is different about this product to other products that are on the market available for the same purpose? What big benefit does the product provide? So what change does it bring to someone's life if they take this product and buy it? What pain does it alleviate? So what's the big pain that it kind of gets rid of for the customer or the reader? And what features are included and what are the benefits of each of those features, okay? So what are the specific features that the product has? And I want you to basically note down and put into notes all of this information before you go out and write this product review. The last one is what do customers love about your product? So in regards to the product that you're promoting, go and source other customer reviews on other review articles and go and see what people are saying about it. Sometimes you can find information on Facebook. Sometimes you can find information on the actual vendor's website, wherever it is, whether it's Trustpilot or whatever, go and see what others are saying and the general kind of feedback that you get from that product as well. So one of the key things you need to do is have an attention grabbing headline. So this could be tailored to specific numbers, dates, or a question that the reader has, or debunking like, you know, X, Y solution that they're trying to get to a desired outcome without having to do X, Y problem. So how to lose 20 pounds without having to train five times a week, how to rank a YouTube video without creating videos, all these kind of things. Like, so what's the thing that people don't wanna do and the desired outcome that they want? Then you've got introduction. I generally come in with an intro. Then I go on to explain who am I? Like who is the writer behind this product? Because you wanna establish a quick relationship with the reader. Then what the product is. So you're gonna explain what it is and what it does, okay? How was the product put together? Is it like, what format does it come in? Is it a video, ebook? Like sometimes you see, that people have a false perception of what the product is. So there's a lot of products that you find on ClickBank that look like they're video training, but they're really just an ebook. So you wanna be the most transparent here and establish a quick relationship as being the trustworthy review to read. Who is the product for? So what problems does it solve? You can obviously put that together in that kind of format. What do you get inside? Now, this is gonna be your way of differentiating yourself from any competition, because if you can potentially purchase the product and show what's inside, then immediately, 
your review is a lot more transparent and authentic than any other review on the internet. Who created the product? So who are the actual creators? And what's a little bit of background about them? Because a lot of people want to know that they're credible to even talk about this topic or teach others about it. How did you come across the product? So how did you make a discovery? Like where did you find it? Did you Google it? Did you find it in a forum? Did someone tell you about it? How did you come across it? And then an in-depth look at the product. And then we go through pros and cons, include any bonuses that you can potentially offer inside of that. And then we've got, did the product work for you? So did it bring any kind of change or do you believe it will for anyone else? And then what others have to say. So this is like customer testimonials or customer reviews. Then is it a good solution? So this is like your final verdict. Got down here, a strong call to action. And then obviously, of course, you can use like testimonials additionally and whatever else just to bring some social proof. Yeah, so there's many different ways of actually putting this together, but that's the general flow that I go through. So one of the things that you really need to establish when you're writing a piece of content for an affiliate product is you need to start off with a very strong statement. If you look at this, you can see it's like how to get 260.7% more organic traffic in 14 days. So he's giving you a desired outcome and then he's targeting the amount of time that's way less than what someone would expect, yeah? So usually you would do this maybe like to get that kind of result maybe in 365 days, you know, to double your traffic. Whereas he's done it in 14 days. So it's like how to get XYZ desired outcome without XYZ, you know, problem. Today, I'm going to show you a new strategy that boosted my organic traffic by 260% in 14 days, you know, so straight away, it's a very strong statement and you always want to be specific about numbers. If you're talking about earnings or something like that, you don't want to say $260. You want to be like 260 point, whatever it is, earnings, you know, so you want to be very specific when you're using titles. The other thing is a picture is worth a thousand words. So this is for your introductions when you're writing these affiliate articles. If we came in here, the first thing we're going to look at if we land on this page and we've just typed Savage Affiliates Review is we can see it says Savage Affiliates Review. It's a 2020 update. So it shows that it's relevant and then we've got immediately this image that tells us exactly what the article is about and it's by someone who doesn't do affiliate marketing so they're just going to give us a genuine review that's what I'm getting from this image I don't know if that's true so you can see here that it's got like SEO, Savage Affiliates, so on and so forth, okay? What you must do in the introduction is resonate with the reader's problem. Um, you can do this by touching on fear or pain. You can see that he comes straight in with, so you're looking to get started in affiliate marketing. So that's the problem that someone's having. Like, you know, they're looking to get started and the winds have brought you here. You're looking into Savage Affiliates. Let's face it, the idea of making money is extremely appealing. So he's touching on not so much the pain, but he's, he's touching on their desire, okay? So so you have touch on desire, fear or pain. So you could do either of those. Yeah, it still kind of establishes the same relationship with the reader. So it's like establish a relationship quick. That's another bullet that I put. You want to be relatable. OK, so he comes straight in, but you don't. He doesn't come in to the relationship like as if he's a crazy person. Think of if you were talking to someone on the street and you were trying to meet like someone of the opposite sex. You wouldn't want to come across crazy if you wanted to establish a quick relationship. So you want to be relatable. So if you was like at a bar or something like that, you might say, hey, uh, that's a nice drink. I actually drink that on a regular basis. But funny, if you add some salt to it, it tastes completely different. They'd be like, oh, let me try that. You know, and it's like you've already got them in the environment that you want them in. So you've controlled that situation. Whereas if you just come up to someone and say, oh, hi, how are you? Like, you know, they're going to be like, oh, I'm OK, thanks. Why? They're going to be a lot more skeptical about the way that you're approaching them. So when you come in here, you want to be very conversational as you can see he comes in like okay what a way to start it because he's kicking straight into the into the content he's telling you like okay look this is xyz like what i know of you and what i can produce for you or or what i can help you with today he's touching on pure desires successful affiliates can travel when they want do this when they want so on yeah but it's, is it still a great opportunity in 2020 so he, he he's basically asking like a question here and it's a bucket brigade because when he asks this you have to read the content to find out the answer you see so it's a very good way of copywriting this is 
excellent copywriting and I'll leave a link to this below. You also wanna establish a promise. So what are you gonna tell the reader? What are they gonna establish or learn today? So let's have a look at what he says. The idea of making money is extremely appealing. He's telling you here, he's kind of leaving it open-ended, but the uh, the way he does it is, is also confirming that he's gonna tell you the answer. Okay, so as we scroll down, we can clearly see, uh, he said, scroll down the page to learn if Franklin Hatchett's affiliate marketing course is the real deal. So that's his promise to you. He's telling you, if you scroll down, look, I'm gonna be brutally honest. You see, so this is a clear promise. Like he's telling you, li listen, this is gonna be the real deal. Like uh, this there's no games, there's no sidetracking. I'm gonna tell you straight up what it is, whether it's good or bad. And it's relatable and it's conversational and it's establishing a relationship because it's like, this is like a personal thing. So I would always say, make your promise personal. You also wanna use a lot of bucket brigades. So as I explained here, where he's basically asking open-ended questions, but questions that they need to be asked. You can see this will then make someone continue to read because he's asking a question that they have. And it's a very conversational tone, almost like an email that's the way you want to make this so it's just like someone reading a message from a friend okay and they're being recommended one of the other key things that you want to do with copywriting for affiliate articles is you always want to use a persona or your face you want to put a face to the text you don't want to just give text without someone being able to recognize who's writing this who's behind it one of the things that I always do and it's so funny because this guy's got it spot on is right after my introduction I basically explain who I who I am so who am I like what do I do yeah like why why am I even credible to talk on this topic? So you can see he's telling you who he is, a little bit about my name, what he does, and why he's credible to talk about it, okay? And then he gives you an image, so straight away, as you continue reading, you know that it's this guy who's talking to you. So it's almost like you wanna make this as if you're in person speaking to the person. So you wanna be in first person language. You never want to do these kind of reviews in third person, because then the reader is not gonna resonate with it. So you wanna use I and you, not we and us, okay? The other other thing is you want to have strong strong headlines now this is the 80 20 uh, to the affiliate article around 80 percent of people actually pay more attention to the headlines than they do about reading the body of the content so what you want is for people that are going to skim read which is going to be a large majority of people you want your headlines to carry them through to the CTA, yeah, the call to action. So what does someone want to know? They want to know what the product is, who created it, a little bit about the person who's talking to them, and they want to know the pros and cons to it, the benefits, so on and so forth. So if we actually take a look here, we can see we take a deep dive into the course, what Franklin's story, like, so who's behind this product, what you should expect in the course, and then the breakdown of the course, all of the modules and so forth. And then we've also got, should you buy the course? So his verdict, the good stuff and the bad stuff, his results, and then a conclusion to the CTA with a call to action and a review rating. Now, one of the ways of actually improving your headings is by using numbers, addressing the readers, using how-tos, normal and question-based, okay? So you can see the statistics there that 36% of people are more attracted to headlines that have numbers inside. And one of the ways that he quickly used this inside of his title is by having 2020 update. So if you just read this and you just saw that, it wouldn't be as attractive if you saw it was 2020 because that tells you that it's right now, it's relevant because the first thing that you're gonna think of is, oh, this is the internet. So that's constantly changing and services and tools are changing. So is it still kind of relevant now because the course was created like two years ago? You know, has it been updated? So some of the numbers based on a 2017 Facebook engagement data test resulted in these numbers being the best ones to use. So you can just copy them down. I usually find that odd numbers work better even on YouTube videos. But of course, you know, this is the data and it speaks for itself. Keywords work well. So obviously if you use your keyword, you can see he's using the actual keyword here. That's obviously for SEO purposes as well. Then at the same time, he's just in using that in conjunction with numbers as well. The main way that you deliver the value. So 10 ways for X, Y, Z, or, you know, 10 secrets to X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. And then you can also so touch on that solutions X, you know, without X, Y problem, like how Brian Dean done it in the example above. A body of the content now, we're talking about what do you do in throughout this uh, content? You know, how do you get people to read all the way down to the call to actions and really want to make a purchase by the time you recommend the product? Because essentially you have to remember when you're doing affiliate marketing or writing affiliate articles, you're not actually selling the product because you don't own it. You're just trying to recommend it as a good resource for 
the person to solve X, Y problem, okay? So you always have to remember you're in the game of recommending products, you're not actually selling products. You need to focus on the benefits of the product and the reason why is because benefits focus on the change that it will bring about to the person's life. For example, if we had a TV and we explained the features, it might be 4K, it might have all these different functionalities, like it's able to, you're able to clap your hands and it switches on, but that doesn't really bring a change to someone's life or if it does, you need to explain how, okay? So that's what benefits do and by focusing on that, you'll be able to write your content in the right way that persuades the reader to make a purchase. If we were talking about the TV example, we could say it's very nice to be able to just, you know, sit down and switch the TV on or if the remote gets misplaced, you can still clap your hands and control the TV. So that's an actual benefit to the person of like, oh, I don't even have to get up anymore, you know, to switch on the TV if I don't have the remote. And then we've got conversational tone. So you have to have and maintain a conversational tone. He kicks it right off from there. Lots of question marks and different emotional tags dot dot dots and all of that kind of email language you know exclamation marks all of that super conversational and very short paragraphs when you are using paragraphs you don't really want to go over like three lines per paragraph use lots of bullet points so you also need to be exercising any kind of bullets so you can see he's doing that right here and then as we come down he's got more there and then you know there's even more again so there's tons and tons of bullets because that works very well in keeping people to read through a piece of content and all it is is because it's like a breath of fresh air you don't want to kind of make it like this trying to read that is going to be more of a headache it's, it's kind of taxing on on your brain than if you are reading this even though this is much longer because he's constantly using these bucket brigades to keep you reading on to keep you reading on to the next part and then it's like a very easy read it makes it very easy for you to then read this whole kind of 3,000 4,000 word article than it would take you to read this area here so some of the best copywriters of our time have shared a few tips that I've managed to pull down into a few simple bullets for you to take on board so some of the best copywriters of our time have shared a few tips that I've managed to pull down and distill into a few steps that you can implement into your copywriting on your affiliate articles. So one of them are making people feel like they belong in this area and belong with this product or service or in the industry. So making them feel accepted and part of a community is a great way to do that. You wanna also kind of put forward that if there's any kind of aftercare that's provided with a product or if there's a certain status that it brings to the person you want to amplify that feeling and really hone in on it so a lot of people like to feel in a good relationship or fit and healthy having quite a bit of money being able to travel and having control of their life so you really want to amplify those feelings and emotions when you're writing to persuade them to continue reading on and want to go and purchase a product as well you can also create a feeling of exclusivity so for example if you were giving a bonus away or something something like that and you say look this is only available to people who are reading this website or reading this piece of content and it's not available anywhere else straight away you're singling them out and you're telling them that only you're getting access to this and this is something that you can't get anywhere else another way is to establish yourself as an authority to talk about the product so of course obviously one of the ways you can do this is in your short bio when you explain who you are and what you do at the beginning of the text as we just saw in the example that I provided you or alternatively you could also do this by leveraging expert quotes within the industry so every single product or niche has experts within that industry that usually endorse certain particular products or certain methods or strategies so on and so forth so what you want to do is leverage that authority opinion by putting it into your text and it's also a great way to break up the text and get someone to continue reading at the same time now even after you've provided all of that information to someone and you've gone through all of the motions you're still going to get some people that are skeptical and that's just the way that we are as humans so so what you want to do is objection handle at this point it's just like making a sales call over the phone which I used to do for quite a long time so the way to do that is to leverage second opinions so a lot of people are gonna think okay well this sounds great but I'm gonna go out and actually research and see what others have to say about it so the way that you can eradicate them doing that is by providing testimonials and then you also can provide customer reviews so if you can provide reviews of others that have actually experienced the same desired outcome that you have particularly 
of why you're recommending this product, then you wanna put that right there after you've told them about the call to action because what that's gonna do is gonna reinforce that they're making the right decision and encourage them to go over and make the right decision or make the purchase potentially. Right after that, I tend to go into some FAQs. The reason being is because even if they have some level of uh, questions that they still need answered, you wanna give it a chance to actually answer those questions right after that. Now, I genuinely usually find them by going onto Google and looking at the people also asked for tab, or you could go to the bottom and see related questions to the keyword that people are asking. You could even go to competitor articles and see what they're actually including in any FAQs if they have them, or go and just genuinely think about what questions someone might have. What other things? You could maybe ask a friend or family if you're gonna buy this, what other questions you would have. However you put that together, you just wanna to put together questions that you think the reader might have and then answer them directly and actively in your wording. So that about wraps it up to be honest, but what I would say is that there's a few general good practice rules that I would highly recommend that you follow when you're writing an affiliate article. All right, so one of the things is I would say use design to set the stage of the offer. So your design matters in an example like this because using a lot of media is going to actually walk the person through or the reader through the article so you don't want to have just a block of text and it's long-winded and it's boring you want to make it fun and friendly and actually take them through that process by using media and text to get them through on an easy read you want to always keep your content on point so no fluff wording don't sidetrack or write things just to make up word count you want to stay on point and stay active and stay on task throughout the whole of the article start to finish Finish. For your CTAs, you wanna use contrasting colors. So if, for example, your site's very green, then you might use red as an opposite color. And you can actually go and Google different scientific contrasting colors to find the exact opposite that's gonna really stand out and pop out of the page to let someone know that the call to action is directly opposite to the text that's taking them through to like an internal page or something like that. You wanna use lots of graphic elements and you wanna make sure that your font is also fun and friendly so throughout your whole entire site, this is just good practice to have. Make sure that it's clean and easy to read. That's number one. And the most important thing, that's about the 80-20 on that. And I think really you can't go wrong with any type of site if you can break down complex information into an easy understandable language. It's only if you're talking about like coding or something like that or some kind of scientific review that people would wanna see a very educated read. However, for the most part, people are gonna wanna see a very conversational tone and anything that's kind of technical called jargon. They want it broken down into an easy level of understanding so they can make a quick decision and know, okay, is this for me or is it not for me? And what are the benefits it's going to bring? What does it change about my life? Why should I buy it? You know, so you want to answer all those genuine questions as if you were the person about to make the purchase. But I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, then you may want to consider subscribing. And also, if you have any questions and you're unsure about anything in this video, then make sure to leave the comments below because I'll get back to you within around 24 hours usually. All right then, I'll speak to you soon. Take care, peace.